In today's episode of Relational Introvert, I am really excited to have a good friend of mine join me, Jeff Abraham. Jeff and I have known each other, I think it's 20 years. Over I feel like years. it's, yeah, over 20 years we've known each other. So I actually consider Jeff more than a friend. I, I see him as a brother. So I'm really excited to have him join this conversation with me. So welcome, Jeff, to this podcast. Thanks a lot, Nancy. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. So before we jump into a conversation that we'll have today, why don't you share a little bit about yourself with everyone else who's listening in? Uh, sure. So uh, I, I'm a person that has worn many different uh, hats over the years, but the one that I uh, have been consistently doing is whether being a volunteer or being a volunteer manager or leader uh, in that way. So um, that's one thing. And then the other thing is just being the son of immigrant parents. Uh, one of the things that I love is learning, not just because I had to get the straight A's, uh, whether it's trying to learn new facts or ideas or languages, um, or experiencing something new like cultures and foods. Uh, the world is so uh, huge and it's important to kind of experience it in the best way possible. That's awesome. I, you know, you, the one other thing that you and I share outside of the whole immigrant parent piece, like children of immigrants, is we talk a lot about our introversion quirks. And so that's one of the reasons I want to have you on this, on this episode. Um, we have some inside jokes around what are those quirks that we have, and I know you and I can laugh about it, and the people that know us can laugh about it. <laughs> so I'm curious if you had to really uh, pick one or two that you really associate with, like the quirks that you would say, yeah, these are the introverted things about me, what might be a couple of those things? Yeah, uh, for sure. I think it's just, it's funny because, yeah, anyways, we all have these assumptions about introverts, <laughs> but um, I think one of the things is for sure, I... I do I enjoy spending time with one or two people. I do not like the big group gatherings. Uh, for me, that's not my uh, niche or the area that I'm interested in all the time. So uh, definitely, I think that's something that I like to do. And sometimes I do. I do shy away from sometimes when there's group gatherings to be like, eh, maybe, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be there today. <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but other times, like, um, you want to be, uh, and be engaged, right? So I think that's important to kind of uh, understand about introverts uh, about us. And also, we do want the uh, the I, we want to have the ability to make the choice to know whether we want to join something or not. Right. Uh, so as much as people think that this time that we're in right now is an introvert's heaven, it's not because we don't have a choice right now. <laughs> so yeah, well, it's funny because I actually was talking to an extrovert recently and we were looking at this time that we're in right now because you brought it up and uh he it was interesting because he said how for him this time is like he's feeling depleted mm. that's one thing i don't feel like i don't feel depleted from an energy perspective i miss being able to really spend time in that in that close-knit way with family and with friends but i don't I don't feel a sense of depletion, which mm -hmm. he did. He's like, I'm feeling depleted. I feel like my energy reserves are at an all time low. And he's like trying to find ways to keep busy, stay connected so he can keep filling up that, that energy reserve. And I was like, I'm actually pretty charged up. Like, I, <laughs> I'm ready to feel? go. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's one of those things where like, it, it's, a, it's dependent on the day, right? Like some days you're like, oh, I'm so glad to be home right now. <laughs> not, and then other days you're just kind of like, no, like I need to get out of here. I want to be around people. And not just around people that are standing in line at Costco or something like that. <laughs> you want to you be around people that you know, hey, Costco people love you. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you want to be around people that you know and you care about, that you interact with, that you can have fun with, you can laugh, you can joke, you can be serious with, you know? So um, that's the important part. Uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah, I know, what, <laughs> I know what that person means, but uh, it's, it's uh, everybody's different. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, you and I have talked about that before, this idea of being bucketed all together, you know, even, and, and I think anybody who's in any group, I'm sure the extroverts would say this about themselves too, right? That we get painted in a certain picture and it's true that we tend to have these 
generalities about groups and introverts definitely have that as well where we get plugged in all together is that we all operate the same way and yeah. it really that's not it our similarities really come around our energy like what mm-hmm. drives our energy where we get energy from but you'll find us in all walks of life yes it's very right? true yeah um i think people assume uh, a lot of things about introverts and so that's one of the things i was talking to a friend about is just where i get my energy from And that's the important thing. Like I get my energy from being on my own uh, or with one or two people. Uh, I don't get it from being around a large group of people. Um, And that's important to kind of recognize as well. Um, As you're talking about that, I wonder what are the implications of when we talk about that, that the individual component and the energy where that comes from, what are the implications of that for a leader? Mm -hmm like knowing that what is the implication of that when we think about teamwork yeah what are your thoughts on that because you lead you've led teams in the past you're leading one now so i'm curious what you think yeah so uh, i i think it's you have to know the different people like i i I think that's the important thing to recognize about introverts too is kind of what you're talking about we're on a spectrum right so uh some of us are closer to the extroverts sometimes and some of us are closer to the extreme introverts that need I need my own office that has closed doors, that has a white noise machine on and nobody disturb me, right? Right. Um, And so you have to get to know who's on your team and depending on who's on your team, that's gonna lead how you interact with them. Uh, So one of the things in my introversion is I feel like I'm being, I'm good at adaptability in that way uh, because I'm able to kind of learn about your style and what works for you and then try to work off of that. And I think that's something that introverts do because we we step back and we just pause and think a minute about what's happening and think, oh, okay, maybe this is a pattern that I'm seeing. Maybe I should do this differently. So I think that's something that I've found with leaders who are introverts and even in me, you know, leading teams is uh, connecting with people, uh, but understanding them and not pigeonholing and saying, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. You know, uh, it's saying, oh, Nancy, you like doing this. So I'm going to try and make sure that I'm conscious of what I do for you so that you can get energy out of yeah, that, that interaction. And right. with this other person who's an extrovert, they need to be out there. They need to be around, uh, you know, a lot of people. So, well, let's go to a coffee shop and talk in a coffee shop because that's going to get you to be able to process properly. Right. So, finding the groove for the team is dependent on who's on the team. Right. Well, I mean, as you were talking about that, I do wonder, I I don't know that I necessarily thought of that as an introvert's strength, but that ability to individualize, I suppose, could be for quite a few introverts a strength because to your point, like most, most of us prefer the smaller group and the getting a little bit deeper in the conversation um and so to do when you do that you learn more about that person and so then we that ability to kind of keep that in mind and so when we then recognize something it's a very specific recognition i was actually chatting with someone recently and he's he had just as part of the conversation had shared that he's an introvert and one of the things that over the course of getting to know him that i realized is a great strength of his was whenever he would comment on something whether you know on social media and he would actually proactively link other people so he would say jeff you would you resonate with this because of xyz and he would like really pick out some very specific things that he was able to call out and they were meaningful they were not generalities in the way that they were said so as you're talking about that he's the person that's coming to my mind but then i can think of others who are good at that up on those things and I feel like if a leader who does that is a is somebody that the people can find a great connection with because they know that this person has heard them 100 percent, and I think that's one of the misconceptions that people have about leadership right is that and I found that too where people kind of think oh you need to be an extrovert to be a leader uh you need to be out there and put yourself out there you need to be at the big table uh you know and so that's not necessarily the case. Sometimes you need to be able to step back and say, hey, what is going on here? What do I really need to do? Not just what people are telling me to do, but right. what really needs to happen in this moment? And what are the other factors in this moment right now? Um, so it's, 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 it's definitely a skill that's acquired, 
over time. And maybe not all introverts have it, but it's something that I find in introverts for sure. Yeah. I, the ability to go deep in that introspection piece probably just makes it a bit more, I don't natural might be the word, but just the sense that like, it makes it easier perhaps to be yes. able to stay attuned to that, to that mm-hmm. piece. I know that one of the things that you uh, shared like a few times as you were, you've been reading that book, Quiet, that, right? And it's by yeah. Susan Cain, and it's this book that's really about introverts. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know how far you've gotten in it because I know it's a pretty thick book. Yes. I'm curious to find out, like, what are you uncovering through that that's also helping you on a personal level, whether mm-hmm. it's understanding yourself or even if it's like looking outward and recognizing what, what am I actually seeing in the world around me yeah. that resonates as I read read these pieces yeah um there's a lot of things that are really fascinating about the book i i think uh, the one thing was just a re- it's it's a reminder and sometimes you forget about this but that it that um the variance of introversion right um that's something that i've really taken away from that is because i know i'm an introvert but i'm like i'm a middle eye balance with the e kind of thing you know so i'm not i'm definitely not a far i so i would never say that i'm a far i and we we travel on the spectrum different points in our lives right um and so for me i definitely lean towards the extroversion of the introvert which i think allows me to be this uh relational introvert the social introvert um but there's people that are on the other far extreme and i I actually forgot about that so reading about that uh and seeing you know far extreme introverts uh sorry i'm not not far extreme introverts but like farther to being actually a a full eye introvert that helped me to understand oh wow okay so i'm this kind of introvert this is another type of introvert there's nothing wrong with either of them it's just different ways that we are um and maybe how we've processed as we've grown up this is how I would like to be. So uh, I think that's definitely one thing. There's a lot of very other fascinating things, but the other thing that was interesting is uh, near the end, they talk a little bit more um, um, just about recognizing differences and cultural differences with introversion. So what's something that might come across as uh, you would think as an introvert, uh, like ideal for an introvert is actually just a cultural norm because of how they place of value within cultures about introversion and you know and usually that's within um more communal uh type societies uh, versus an individualistic society uh so the communal societies tend to value silence they tend to value introspection and not having those uh, out loud emotions and outbursts Uh, and of course that can be taken um, in many different ways as well. So it's important to kind of like value and understand that when you're going across cultures as well, um, as an introvert, you actually should pick up on some of the introvert cues that you already have and kind of go with those as you're in that culture. So yeah, those are like, I think those two have kind of helped me to navigate even within teams, right? Because uh, even you could be from me, you know, we're from similar cultural backgrounds, but even how you and I are as people is very different. So how we need to relate to each other and how you and I relate how, can be different from somebody from even our same cultural background, right. uh, even if they're an introvert. So it's it's just recognizing people are people. They come from collective stories that they've built up in their lives and you need to work with that. That's, how, yeah, you know what, I, I didn't think about the cultural aspect of it, but it's true, the cultural aspect when we think about, we talk a lot about nature versus nurture. And so that is a big component of our story. What, what has brought us to where we are right now, how we choose to respond, why we choose to respond that way. And yeah, that's actually a good point that some of it fits better with the introverted side of things. Some of it fits better with the extroverted side of things. So it kind of, it's, it's an interesting way to look at it. I wonder what this conversation might be like if we were to have it with someone who does not have as much of a North American context 100%. around it, whether this would even be a surprising conversation. Yeah. 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 And it's kind of like uh, if, if fish could talk and we could tell, ask them to speak about their surroundings and be like, how's the water? They wouldn't even know it's water because that's just what they're in. You know, right. so for people who are introverts within cultures like this, sometimes they may not recognize that as an introvert value. 
um, and yet it is, right? So. Right. That's actually a really good point. You, when you introduced yourself, you talked about the volunteer space being yeah. a big piece of who you are, what you've done from a, for a very long time. So the nonprofit space, the uh, work around social, I'm, it could, social work, social justice, those are things that you've been involved in for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel that you're the way you operate, like this whole, we've, this conversation around introversion, do you think that has, do you feel that that leads you more into that side of the work or does, or how does that fit into the work that you do as well? Yeah, I, I think, um, it's interesting, right? So again, for people that are in leadership positions, if you think about it, um, we have to, like leaders have to sell the organization and get people to donate time, donate money, donate ideas and thoughts so that we can kind of progress and get better, right? And move forward. So uh, there's many different ways that people can volunteer. It's just how they use their resourcing. Uh, but people then tend to say, okay, then, well, for the upfront leader, you know, the, the main leader or you know, the top leaders, they need to have those extroverted characteristics and abilities. And um, it's not always true, right? Uh, I think that for introverts, again, like us or you know, other people, we have that ability to be able to go up in front of a group. We have that ability to be able to sell. And I think it's because we have that um, ability to kind of take a minute, pause, read the audience, take it in and be in the moment and just take it in, you're able to kind of, okay, what do I need to do here to adapt to this group of people uh, to kind of talk about what I'm, I'm here? This is something that I'm passionate about. I love uh, what I'm doing and I want you to be passionate about it, but I don't want to come off across as like me trying to sell you something, you know? Right. I want you to be able to see and tap into what's inside you and um, say, oh, you know what? That resonates with me. Um, and so I think that sometimes uh, we can get introverts who are the leaders that are able to step in in those moments and just say, step back for a minute, right? And kind of sell, because I don't know, you think about sometimes like this is like characteristic used car salesperson, right? And just the sleazy taxes that they can use. Um, and, you know, that's how people sometimes would see even people in the volunteer sector, we're trying to sell you something or a nonprofit sector, want you to give us your money, right? But it's about relationships. Uh, like the only way that I can get you to be part of anything that we do is if you trust me. And if you understand why I'm doing what I'm doing, right. then you might be inspired to say, well, how do I get involved in giving my time, giving my money, giving my space to you uh, and helping you to succeed in the work that you're doing. Um, so yeah, I think it's, it's an interesting thing that people kind of assume, oh, you should be an extrovert to be a leader, um, but you don't need to be. Um, you just need to be able to read the, the areas that you're going into. Right. Well, you know, even when we talk about sales, I, you know, having been on the sales side of things in, in different organizations in the past or supporting the sales functions, even I feel that sales has a bad rep because of exactly what you said, right? Like the quote, quote unquote, like the sleazy tactics. And I've always thought of sales as to your point, relational, it is yeah. so relational, like true sales is relational. Yeah. So if I think about my experiences purchasing big purchases that we've made, the person who I dealt with mattered. And I, the difference between someone who was salesy versus mm -hmm. someone who was relational is it's, it's very obvious. Right. Yeah. And so I feel that the understanding of the why that you talked about is the key thing. So as you were talking, what really brought together for me, the, the similarity between an introvert and extrovert really would be your conviction behind something. Mm -hmm.